Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. In this video, we're going to learn how to do the yellow corners. If you are following along and if you watched all the videos and if you've been practicing in between the videos, then by now you should be able to get your cube to this point where you've got the white cross, you've got the four white corners, okay, which gives you the entire bottom layer. Then you should be able to do the second layer and you should be able to do the yellow cross on top. So we've learned all of those steps so far. If you haven't yet done that, go back before you go any further and progress through those videos. And uh, practice each one, each stage, until you get to the point where you can do the yellow cross. The nice thing is that in order to practice the next stage, you have to practice the last stage. So you're going to get a lot of practice on the white cross because you can't do the white corners until you do the white cross. And you're going to get a lot of practice on the white corners because you can't do the second layer until you do the uh, first layer and so forth. So by the time you get to the yellow cross, you should be really starting to get really good at the white cross. The algorithm to go from the yellow cross to fill in the four yellow corners is one that is pretty straightforward and easy. It's R U R prime U R U two R prime. And there's just like with the yellow cross, there's some hints that you're going to look at to, to uh, know how to orient your uh, top, how to orient the yellow cross. So the first thing I'm going to look for are yellow pieces on the side. Okay, and I've got two right here, and I have one right here, and I have one right here. I want to make sure, and it's going to be different. It won't always be like that. I won't always have two here and one here and one here. I could have some, a couple yellows already on the top and maybe a couple open spaces, but if I don't have a complete yellow top, then I have at least one or two yellows here on the side. I need to hold my cube so that one of those yellows is right here in the bottom left corner. Okay, and it's best if I can hold it with two yellows on the side, but at least one in the bottom left corner. And then I'm going to do that algorithm I just uh, told you. So it's R, U, R prime. U, R, U2, R prime. And this gives me the fish. You see my fish there. Uh, also called soon. In fact, usually called soon, which just means fish. Okay. When I get the fish or the soon, S U N E, then I am going to turn him so his nose is in the bottom left corner. So that's my next hint. My first hint was put a yellow in this piece right here. But once I had the fish, I want to turn the fish so his nose is down here in the bottom left corner. And then I repeat the algorithm. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. And that gives me a complete yellow top. Sometimes you'll get the fish a second time and his nose will be up here in this corner. Then all you're going to do is turn it down. So it's down here and then do it again. And after that, you should get the complete yellow top. Completing the yellow cross and the four yellow corners is what is referred to as orienting the last layer or OLL. -L. By the time you're done orienting the last layer, you have 
the yellow top, but you still have the sides out of whack, as you can see. Okay, the sides aren't quite where they belong. Well, how many algorithms did it take us to get to the uh, OLL, to get our yellow top done? Remember, we, we first did the algorithm to get the yellow cross, uh, and then we did the algorithm to get the four yellow corners, and in this case, we did it two times. Sometimes you have to do it up to three times to get the yellow completely done. So that could be a total of four uh, algorithms that you have to complete, and that would be quite slow in a competition. Anything that slows you down is uh, something that you want to eliminate or reduce. So there are actually 57 algorithms that you can learn that would orient the last layer in one single algorithm. Once I have the two yellow, or I'm sorry, the two layers, the bottom layer and the second layer completed, then I could look at my top and I could learn to recognize the pattern. And then looking at the pattern, I would say, okay, well, which of the 57 cases is this? Because there's only 57 different ways that this can this top layer can be oriented. So I can look at it and say, oh, this is whatever case. This is bow tie. This is headlights. Uh, this is blinkers. Wh whatever it is. And then and then actually the one I just showed you soon, or fish, is one of those cases or two of those cases because there's two different fish. There's one in the bottom corner and there's one in the top corner. But once I recognize the pattern, I can do the algorithm that goes with it, and I can orient the last layer all in one single step instead of having to do three or four uh, triggers, three or four algorithms in order to get it completed. So for now, it is sufficient because you need to get practice and you need to get to where you can solve the entire queue to do it with three or four different algorithms. But in time, as you get better, you're going to want to progress through OLL and PLL, which is the next step, uh, which stands for permute, and that's when we get these in order. So there is a progression that you'll want to go through that we'll talk about in a future video to where you're doing first the entire top in four algorithms. So not just the yellow, but the yellow and the sides in four algorithms. We call that four look last layer. Then you're want to get to, going to get to where you do, and this is where most people stop, uh, is two look last layer, which is uh, doing the top in one algorithm and the side in one algorithm, OLL in one algorithm and PLL in one algorithm. Now, if you really want to get fast uh, and you have some time to spare, a select few individuals will learn to do one look last layer, which means solving the yellow top and permuting the side in one single algorithm. But there are literally thousands of cases, thousands and thousands of cases for uh, what that yellow top or that rather that last layer might look like after you finish the final two the first two layers and there are 493 algorithms that you have to memorize in order to solve that layer even though there's thousands of cases uh, a lot of them can use the same algorithm to be solved so those who go to that level and there are very few uh, you're they're learning to recognize literally thousands of cases and apply and to know which of the 493 algorithms to apply to solve it in one case or in one algorithm. Because of that, most people, even world record holders, even the fastest speed cubers, stop with uh, two look last layer, which is one algorithm for the top, because that's only 57 algorithms, and one algorithm for the side, and then they're done. So this is pretty cool, if you think about it. You are almost there. You've got just a couple of steps left to get your cube solved. You've done something that is pretty phenomenal.
something that very few people accomplish in their life and something that, let's admit it, is kind of hard. Okay, you worked really hard on some of these steps. Some of them maybe were a little bit easier for you, but some of them have been challenging and they're starting to come into focus. Do you notice that? You're starting to get what was hard after now repeating it several times is starting to get a lot easier. And I want you to remember this throughout your life. I want you to look at your cube and next time you are faced with something that is challenging, I want you to remember that you learned to solve a Rubik's Cube. You learned to do something hard because you are capable of doing hard things. Yes, they're hard and even frustrating. And those are real emotions that you feel. But you were able to work through those challenging emotions and, and steps and get to a point where you could do it and you could master and overcome. You have a growth mindset. Uh, keep that with you in the future. Don't be afraid to try and to do hard things because that is how you will succeed. Next time we are going to learn how to permute the last layer, PLL, at the first step, there are two steps to PLL as well. And then a the the, uh, meeting after that, we will learn how to uh, do the final step, which will give you a solved cube. Well, hello. Thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website which is Handsome Science Teacher, because I mean, look at this face. HandsomeScienceTeacher.com, where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos, because well, you already have access to those, right? They're free, but also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me, where, we, where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together. I have an entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.